What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Survivor Sax. Today, I want to cover one of the biggest mysteries in all of music. Now, as a saxophone player, I imagine this is the same thing if you are any kind of instrumentalist. But the question is, why is it that when I play a song, it just doesn't sound as good as when somebody sings it? And the big reason why is that we aren't using the same kind of devices that singers use to convey emotional conviction. So I want to do a deep dive into who is one of my modern favorite singers, which is Adele. But I want to go into detail about why I've chosen Adele. And it's not just because she's English. It's not just because she speaks with an English accent. It's because of the kind of English accent that she speaks with and the fact that she doesn't use it when she's singing. So the process of learning how to say her words, how to sing these words when she's singing is fundamentally different from the way she speaks. Now, as a saxophone player, I can equate that to me playing a song much differently than the way I'm practicing it or the way I'm learning it. But our process of learning the song should be incorporated into the way we're going to actually perform it. So I want to go over some of the devices that she does, some of these weird Adele things that she does to translate what I believe is a Cockney accent into her own Adele accent. OK, let's get to it. Now, I don't know anybody in America that actually pronounces words like this or even really does these kind of things. And I do think that a lot of it is just kind of original Adele stuff. <laughs> but it sounds fantastic. And this recent song that she came out with, Easy On Me, is one that we're going to take a look at. Number one is a subtone transition. You hear this with big name actors. You hear somebody talk like this and then at the end of the phrase, they go into something like this. This is a subtone transition. You are transitioning into a more airy sound in order to deliver a different kind of subtle statement. Another thing that we're going to do is take a look at the way she does this explosive pop. She'll start with a subtone and then go into something that's pretty aggressive, this massive increase in dynamics. I, I call this an explosive pop, and she does it on a word like hands, hands, hands. She does this a lot. Another thing we're going to look at is a vibrato cadence. In the same way that a five chord resolves to one, we can resolve wide vibrato or fast vibrato into no vibrato. One of the biggest things that everybody uses in pop music or in smooth jazz is increases and decreases in volume. We're going to take a look at how she's doing that. And we're going to take a look at just how she's using vibrato. And she also does in the clip that I'm going to show you one of the classic smooth jazz saxophone things, which is this end of a phrase flip. It just goes up a whole step. All right, let's take a look. Let's hear the subtone transition on the words gold and river. There ain't no gold in this river. Let's hear the subtone transition on the words gold and river played on a saxophone in reference to how Adele sings this. <laughs> Let's take a listen to the percussive pop on hands. My hands in forever. And then on saxophone, on soprano, this is an F sharp in the upper register. I can use an alternate fingering by overblowing the low B natural with the octave key. So I get something like this. This next line, she says, go heezy and then on. She does that percussive pop on on with like a little H before that. On soprano sax or tenor, that's a D on the heezy. So I can either scoop into that from a low C sharp with the octave key. 
I can give that more of a breathy attack and then hum, that percussive attack is on a B natural. On either soprano or tenor, using that overblowing trick is gonna be a bit much. So I'm gonna mute the side of the reed like this on the B natural, which is on for on me baby. Here she does what I like to call a vibrato cadence. Now, a harmonic cadence is usually just a five to one, but with vibrato, it's usually a wide vibrato cadencing or resolving to no vibrato. So when she says on me, the on has the vibrato and then nothing on the me, like this. On had no time to choose. This is something that probably happens more often in smooth jazz saxophone than any other effect other than vibrato, but it's this massive decrease or massive increase in dynamics. And here she massively drops the dynamics. <laughs> This time she sings on me. There's a lot of vibrato and it's fast at the end, keeping the intensity up. On me. On me. On probably doesn't even show. She says probably, something like probably, probably something like this, but it's the end of that, which is a very, very common smooth jazz saxophone device to go up a whole step at the end of a phrase. So probably doesn't even show that little oop. It probably doesn't even show. I frequently talk about not oversaturating a melody with a lot of complex harmony, at least not from the soloist point of view. How do we place something very simplistically, but still convey the type of emotion and carry that type of impact without being harmonically dense? Well, we can cheat. And one of the ways that we can cheat is to actually reharmonize the song itself. So that way, when we're playing something that's kind of diatonic, it actually sounds a lot more complex than what it really is, because in reality, it is actually more complex. So let's take a listen to the way I've reharmonized a few bars of this song. like this kind of content and you want to help the channel grow you can buy me a piece of cake it's like a kickstarter patreon type of thing make a donation and that helps a lot i also have my autismo books for alto and tenor also have my all things diminished books for all instruments and i also have most importantly my saxophone sound development book for all saxophones all right so let's put these devices together and hear what it sounds like. So I wanna utilize dynamics. I wanna utilize that pop that she does. I wanna utilize all these things and put it together and play a melody that just sounds tasty and interesting. Okay, let's do it.
That's all I got for you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for tuning in. See ya!